Yo, what up? Toshi here. Is Huo Huo now the best defensive option in Honkai Stereo? In my honest opinion, yes, she is. But it's time to not look at these characters as defensive options and rather just look at them as for what they provide for the team overall. And she's a character that is just really good because she provides valuable buffs outside of being a defensive character. That's why Huo Huo is the best healer or a defensive option in the game currently. We're, we're going to compare her to all of those other characters to find out exactly why she shines right now as a character even though she is skill point neutral, which might seem like a detriment at first, but I promise you, it really isn't a big deal at all whatsoever. I'll go as far as to say the buff she provides in exchange for being a skill point neutral character makes up for the fact that she is a skill point neutral character. Now let's do a quick rundown of Huo Huo as a character. First of all, she is, as I said before, played as a skill point neutral character. You want to make sure that you maintain your talent at all times because if you do not have your healing buff or your healing passive, in this case a sacrificed life, then you are not going to provide healing on the off turn for Huo Huo. That's very important because that is her main source of healing. Okay, so apparently they changed the name of her passive to Divine Provision. It is the same thing as Sacrificed Life. I guess they just changed the name of the last minute. But Divine Provision, if you have this passive on your Huo Huo on the off turns, then you're going to cleanse those debuffs from your allies. Now, this is six times you are able to actually cleanse debuffs. Keep in mind that there is no other healer in the game currently that can cleanse as many debuffs as she can right now. So that means if you have two allies, three allies CC at the same time, she is going to cleanse those three CC effects from your allies whenever they take their turn. And she is also going to cleanse those allies from any other debuffs they may have also. She also gives energy and attack to your team. Now, the 20% energy does not seem like that much on paper. But I promise you, the 20% she does provide to your team helps with getting those characters the extra little bit of energy they need in order to get their next ultimate for the rotation. This is very important when we talk about characters like Ting Yun and the energy she needs to hit that breakpoint, and characters like Dan Hang and Bibito Knight and Jing Lu who need that little bit of extra energy in order to keep their stacks from their passives. And the attack increase means you can use her not only in hyper carry teams, but in other teams such as the DOT teams and other teams going forward, dual DPS teams, because the attack percent increase is just so universal. So for comparison purposes, Bronya gives 55% attack increase at max levels if you don't have idolons for the character, of course, and Huo Huo gives a 15% less attack increase for the same amount of turns as Bronya. So that is a huge amount of attack you're getting for all of your allies. So I honestly regret rolling for Luocha. And I explained this in previous videos, I explained this not that long ago, Luoch is just a character that is very easy to power creep. And the reason why is because he just provides healing and a skill point, which is all you could ask for from a healer. But again, that is pretty much the bare minimum at this point in Honkai Star Rail. I know it's crazy I am saying that because we weren't like this, you know, I would say months ago, right? Luoch was regarded as being super overpowered. But again, as it stands right now, giving buffs alongside the healing and the you know, skill point, whatever you give to your allies is going to be more important than just giving healing and a skill point. And unfortunately, Huo Huo, although she does take a skill point away from your team, the energy she provides for some team comps that you would have, you know, Luocha in, and she replaced Luocha in those team comps would mean that those characters that benefit from the energy she provides means that they'll get their ultimates. And for some of those characters, that means that you may not even have to use any skill points. And for some other characters like Daniel, for example, that means that you just end up getting your skill point management in control when you just get more energy. And we talked about this before, but if Locha actually provided the attack increase from his Eidolon 1 in his kit, he would be a much better character. But as it stands currently, this is what Huo Huo does as a defensive option. Now let's talk about Fu Xuan. Fu Xuan is an amazing character. This character is so good that I think that her and Huo Huo are in the same playing field. I think Fu Xuan, as it stands right now, for a lot of the teams I use her in, is just better than Locha. And that's because of the damage mitigation she provides. It is the best out of any character in the game right now. Bailu was the queen of damage mitigation, but right now, Fu Xuan is that queen, right? I mean, she is a queen after all. The queen uh, Divinier, I think everyone regards to her as a queen at this point in the community. She has a best in slot team. It's just unfortunate that Luocha doesn't have a best in slot team. He's just flexible in every team comp in the game. Whereas Huo Huo has a best in slot team. That is pretty much every team in the game currently, other than Model Quantum, and that's Fu Xuan's best comp. You see where I'm going with this? 
Now, Bailu, just like Fu Xuan, is very good at mitigating damage. She also has a revive in her kit, so she's very solid in some situations. Like, for instance, there are some enemies that deal so much damage to your allies. If you bring some squishy or harmony characters, well, Bailu can not only give them invigoration, allow them to take less damage, heal them whenever they take damage, but also revive them if one of them die. And if you're fighting that giant ape that loves to just RKO one of your allies, then Bailu is there to revive them in case they die. So she's just a very solid character whenever you actually have some scenarios that benefits her versus other healers. But in the case of Fu Xuan, Bailu is just not as good as Fu Xuan. Fu Xuan is just better in every single way. And Fu Xuan has ways of stopping your characters from getting CC'd, so you can have her in other scenarios, not just you know, against enemies that have no CC. Now, Lynx for a 4-star is just really cracked. You can use her in Mono Quantum, and she is a very solid replacement for Fu Xuan. Now, there is some scenarios where she's just like Luocha, she's just like any other Abundance character, even like Huo Huo. If your allies are too squishy, they're just going to get one shot. And, you know, Lynx is unfortunately a part of that category. She doesn't provide any ways of mitigating damage from your allies. She has a bunch of heals, and she has a bunch of cleansing. But that's pretty much it. Now, she is a very solid character for some characters, right? She is best in slot for a character like Blade because she increases his aggro and gives him more HP, which is very good for that character. So she has a best in slot team. So that's why Huo Huo, I would say, is not better than Lynx in teams with Blade. So that's where a character like Lynx would shine, and that's fine because she should have a best in slot team. And she's very good for 4-star Monoquantum as well. Natasha just unfortunately faces the reality of being a 4-star healer you get for free at the launch of the game. It's like this for every other game you play, the launch characters eventually become obsolete in one way or, no or another. That's not to say that Natasha is a bad character. Natasha is a solid character, but you just have to put more investment into her to get the job done. And just like all the other healers aside from Bailu and Fu Xuan, she has no way of mitigating damage from your allies that they'll be taken from the enemy. So your enemies are susceptible to from one shots if they are not built with tanky stats. Now Jeppard is an interesting case as a defensive option. He's really solid because he gives your allies a giant shield. That essentially is a double HP bar for your allies and he can refresh it pretty often, assuming he gets hit from the enemy and he's able to regenerate his energy consistently. Now what I like about this character is that he's just really good because as it stands right now, there is no mechanic for damage from the enemy to seep through your shields. Now you're familiar with Corrosion and Genshin Impact, and whenever a mechanic like that gets introduced in Honkai Star Rail, then characters like Jeppard March 7th won't be as good as they are now, and you know, well, the preservation path as a whole might not be as good, right? But as it stands right now, he's just really good because he provides that double HP bar for your team, and he also has ways of freezing the enemy too. So he's just good for dot teams, because that double dot proc is very good, and he's a defensive option, right? So he's just good for dot teams in general. But Huo Huo did replace him in every single way, because she is just a better character for dot teams overall. So the only character that is able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Huo Huo right now is Fu Xuan. That's because Fu Xuan has a best in slot team. Fu Xuan is a character that is also very good, better than Huo Huo in some situations, because she has straight up damage mitigation and stops your allies from getting one shot. She also has crit rate buffs, which adds to her being a harmony-like character. So that's why she is comparable to a character like Huo Huo, because Huo Huo does give energy and attack, which is comparable to a straight up crit rate increase for your damage dealers. So there you have it. Now I made a video previously on why you should not care about skill point management, right? It was the meta shift video. Not necessarily a well, it actually is a meta shift, right? Because Huo Huo is now a better option than Luocha in most teams, right? If not all teams. And that's because for those teams where you need that extra skill point, you're going to get their ultimates and that acts as a skill point for those damage dealers. So you don't really care about the fact that Luocha does provide a skill point. And if you take into consideration that just all the cleansing effects she has in her kit just makes her so much more valuable because if most of your allies get CC'd at once, well, there's, you know, the fact that Luocha just can't cleanse all of your allies at the same time. That's part of the reason why Huo Huo is just better in those scenarios. Now, does that mean you should not roll for Luocha? No, because he is a character that still has very nice value, right? He's a character you can just put in any team and he gets the job done. Now, Fu Xuan, in my opinion, is going to be the best defensive option in the game just because the damage mitigation she provides. She has the heal with her ultimate. She has the crit rate. She has the HP increase and she has CC blockage. She has the whole package. And 
she has one of the best teams in the game that is going to become better even more in, so into the future, and that's Mono Quantum. Does that mean power creep exists in the abundance or defensive option category of Honkai Stereo? I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, yes, but it is what it is, right? You can still clear the hardest contents with any healer in the game, right? So who cares? That's it. Thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your day. Peace.